So Velma came out on HBO Max. It certainly is a show. It's currently one of the lowest rated series of all time on IMDb, which is a feat. But the show made me reawaken some memories, and that is, I love Scooby-Doo. It was one of my favorite childhood obsessions. So I want to take a knack of actually trying to make a Scooby-Doo show I would enjoy as a fan. And seeing everyone else's redesign of the gang has truly inspired me. Because the thing was, when I first heard the news they were going to make a more adult version of Scooby-Doo show, I wasn't... I was kind of intrigued actually. Like the pieces are there to make a more adult version of Scooby-Doo and it's not impossible. You can do a darker tone, you can have a murder instead of just people committing tax fraud. Like heck, some version meant for kids can be super dark and super scary. So it's baffling that this show failed so hard. So I want to take on the challenge. And just as a side note, I don't have any experience doing anything TV shows. This is just for my own amusement and just a thought exercise. Like, this is not something I would say this would be the perfect show. This is just me having fun. So the first character I'm doing is Velma because she has always been my fave and she is the main character of this new show. So it, it just made sense in my head to start with her. And I also feel like this show really, really messed her up because... <laughs> Ah my god, she is so unlikable in this version. I don't really... Because I feel like the show is trying to do this thing where a lot of older adult animated show does, where it like kind of focuses on like just bad people just living their life. Sort of like... Uh, I haven't watched a lot of these shows, like uh, Family Guy and Rick and Morty and Bojack Horseman and stuff. So I can't really pinpoint why maybe those shows work and this doesn't. But I feel like it's a weird direction for to take Scooby-Doo with because I feel like a lot of the appeal of the franchise is that you have a group of four very very different people that loves to solve mystery together and like these four people live in a van together with their dog. You have to convince me that they're not gonna murder each other during that car ride and uh, I'm not buying it in this version. <laughs> But never mind all that, how would I do Velma as a character? Because she is usually the brains of the gang. Like, she's always the brains of the gang. And usually her main trait is that she's the smart one. I have to keep that because I feel like one of the problems I also have with Velma as like a show is that they change the personalities of these characters who in their original incarnation are very simple characters. So if you take away that one character trait they're known for, you don't have a character that's recognizable as that character, so it feels very weird. So she's the smart one. I feel like I would make her like very book smart. That's like her main source of intelligence, like she knows stuff, but I wouldn't really make her... But she, she has no street smarts. <laughs> I feel like that's more fun. I feel like some version of Elma, she's a bit too cynical and I feel like that's kind of just a trend where you have like oh the smart guys they have to be a cynical and mean to their friends for no reason <laughs> like I don't know I I think it's I think it's just a boring way to do a smart character like just because she is smart and intelligent doesn't mean she has to be a complete stick in the mud and or act that she is better and smarter than anyone around her that she knows best because she is the smart one and it's just annoying. So as mentioned, I would make her more like book smart, but also make her a bit of a dork because I think I think her original design from the from the seventies is a bit more of like the dorky way of nerd. I think that would make for like a fun character. Overall, I would just try to make her so different from this HBO version of Alba because oh my god, I hate her. I hate her so much. <laughs> Anyways, I feel like I will comment on one thing. It's that I don't mind uh, this version being more diverse. <laughs> I don't mind those differences, like those changes, because like the original show was made in the nineteen sixty nine, like a year after the civil rights movement ended in America. So yeah, it wasn't gonna be diverse in the original version. And if you're gonna kind of update the series to a more modern audience it makes sense to have it be more diverse so i'm not gonna change 
that, at least. One thing I will change, however, is to have them actually be adults in this version. I, I feel like if this is going to be a show meant for adults, why not have adults as main characters? Like, if I'm going to watch something that is for adults, I want to see adults. I don't want to see teenagers. I also feel like in our current age, I feel like it's more realistic for the gang to travel around the country if they're all adults. Like in Summer of Scooby-Doo, Velma is supposed to be like 16 and I can't imagine any at least loving and <laughs> caring parents letting their 16 year old travel across the country in a van with three other teenagers and their dog. Might just be me. I also feel like if they're adults, you don't have to worry about explaining stuff like where are their parents without explaining it with either they're super neglectful or them being dead. And you can also have them travel around the country, which is one of my favorite aspects of the original series, where they can just travel everywhere in both the US and outside the US. I think it's like a very fun thing because then you can kind of do a lot of new stuff in each episode. I also feel like you don't fall into the troubles of when you have like a mystery story happen in like one small town, because after three seasons, you start to kind of be like, isn't everyone in this town dead yet? <laughs> if there's like a murder each week. Okay, I need to be real for a second with you guys. But what does I, the only one who wasn't confused when HBO Velma named their version of Shaggy Norville? Like, so many people have got comments, it's like, oh, why did they change their name to Norville in this version? Because it's his name. It has always been his name. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> do you think his parents named him Shaggy at birth? Be real here, guys. Anyways, rant aside. Norville, slash Shaggy, it's just, it's just a fun character. And he's also very messed up in this new version. Not as bad as the other version, because on one hand, he is the only character I kind of like there are certain aspects i don't like about him at all i don't like the whole like simping thing he has for velma i always think it's weird when scooby-doo media pair shaggy and velma up it kind of feels like oh well daphne and fred are together and have like a romantic dynamic um the two the other boy and girl in gang should also be in romantic relationship Right? But back to HBO version of Norville. I think the reason he is somewhat like a likable person is that because he is like the only person who has any like redeemable qualities in the HBO show. <laughs> Anyways, how would I do Shaggy then? So I would still have him be a pretty big coward because that's such a big part of his character. It's one of the most consistent character traits he has. But I also think it's very still important that he is like into mysteries like i feel like the gang as a whole the one interest they all have in common should be that they all love a good mist i would still have that as his character because i feel like certain versions it's like he always like oh this is so scary you guys and it's like well, why are you here then <laughs> why are you here if you hate this so so much i don't get it i don't feel like there's this thing that certain versions of Shaggy have him be like f come from a weirdly rich family that's why I would still keep that because I think that is a fun thing I also when I realized that as well I also realized that Daphne is also like same where she's also usually like from comes from a rich family as well so I thought to myself you know that would be fun like if they knew each other like they were like childhood friends because they're like parents or friends because of their businesses so, you know, I'm going to add that. That's, that that's, that's new lore I have added to, to my version of Scooby-Doo. I also had to add Scooby because it's... Why would you not add the name of the IP in a show based on that IP? I also feel like it's so weird when the... When the writers talk about it, oh, it was just so hard to, like, have a talking dog fit our tone. Because, uh, back to Family Guy comparison, I feel like this show has a very similar tone to Family Guy. Like, it's 
it is a very silly world where you have to kind of like suspend your disbelief for it to actually be invested. I feel like having a talking dog is the most outlandish thing in the world. Like Family Guy is one of the most well-known animated shows of a lot a long time now and they have a talking dog as like one of the main cast and no one seems to question it at all so we as an audience member don't question it either. What I'm gonna say about Scooby is that it's a very easy way they could have just fixed it if they didn't think that a talking dog would be would be too childish for their very adult show is that you just don't have him talk. Like I know like Scooby being a talking dog is like such like uh, thing that most people associate with Scooby Doo franchise, but honestly, he doesn't talk that much. It's very like, especially like early version of Scooby Doo. He's he kind of just says a few words. It's a bit incomprehensible, honestly. So I don't think it's that much of a leap to have him just not be able to talk. You just have him be a bit more of an intelligent dog than usual. Like you can have him act kind of like Gromit from Wallace and Gromit, who is also a dog who is like a bit more intelligent than your normal dog, but you can still feel that, oh, this person has like, this dog, I mean, has like human intelligence and comprehension of things. You could have just done that. So I'm doing it. I'm, I'm adding that. I'm adding that. I also would like to give a shout out to Lavender Town because she also did a very similar thing. She did hers first, but I had I had plans to do this before before she released her video. But anyways, she she added like, oh, what if like Scooby was like some sort of like service dog because then you can have him join the gang without it being like a nuisance and like. I thought oh, that is that's genius. That is genius. And I thought because like I know a lot of people joke that Shaggy is like some sort of sort of stoner. And honestly, I never, I, I don't know. Maybe I was just a kid, so I was just didn't realize. But honestly, I just saw him as a person with anxiety. <laughs> so you know what? Just have Scooby be like therapy dog. Like, but then they have like this super special bond between them. Because I feel like Shaggy and Scooby should be like the closest of the gang. A man and his dog. It's, it's like the number one dynamic of all time. Everyone needs this in their life. So Daphne is a bit of a weird character because uh, in most versions, especially in the early days of Scooby-Doo, she's usually just characterized as being girl. She is girl character. <laughs> Pretty girl. Uh, so that's still a thing, I guess. And um, I feel like in later versions, uh, because mostly in like early versions, she was usually the one who got like kidnapped by ghosts and shit. Uh, sometimes Shaggy was also kidnapped. It was it was usually Daphne, and on a rare occasion, it was Shaggy who also got kidnapped by Ghost. But I feel like in later years, she has kind of become more of like a strong, independent woman, where she's like, where she's like the person who knows martial arts. She's like the one who knows how to fight and stuff. So I feel like Daphne, I, f I would make her quote unquote the muscle of the team, where she's like. I feel like she's also like the only one of the group who has charisma. <laughs> like if this is like a D and D party, she's the only one who has uh, the the proper charisma of the group. Fred kind of has it, but it's kind of by accident. <laughs> like he's just he's just charming by accident. Daphne is charming on purpose in in my version. Like Velma's highest uh, ability score would be intelligence. Uh, Shaggy's highest ability score would be dexterity. Daphne, as mentioned, would be charisma. Fred is like the character who has like highly specific um, <laughs> abilities that's like very unique to the situation. <laughs> and then he never gets to fully use it in a, like, a productive way. I would love to play uh, D&D <laughs> of like maybe one shot or a campaign with like the characters of Scooby-Doo. That'd be fun. Maybe I should have done that instead, just draw the Scooby-Doo gang as a d, d party. <laughs> I feel like they would fit as a d, d party. So I think for Daphne, because I would imagine that she grew up in this like rich household. So I would kind of make her like an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> where she, like, she, she seeks out the adventure for, for just the thrill of it. Because I feel like maybe like with 
her growing up in a very rich household. Maybe she had very kind kind of protective parents or like a sheltered life, I guess I would say is more accurate. She just wants to explore the world. She wants to solve mysteries like the rest of the gang. And she's just, she just wants to solve mysteries because she she loves it. She loves it more than any. Thing. She wants to like live life instead of just being like some sheltered rich kid for the rest of her life. I think that would fit. As mentioned previously, I would love for it to be like they travel around the country. I guess that would make it a bit more episodic. And I know most shows these days would more <laughs> like to have like a um, plot line, like a big plot line that goes through the entire season. And, um, but, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how I would do that, but I guess you can do either. Maybe there is like a bigger connection. Like maybe it's like Magnus Archives-esque where like in the beginning it seems very like episodic, but then after a while you realize that all of these stories kind of, uh, um, more and more start to connect into like this bigger story. Like, I would love to have the gang kind of be, like, uh, kind of BuzzFeed Unsolved-esque with, uh, like, traveling around the country to, like, um, as ghost hunters and, like, solving uh, age-old um, <laughs> mysteries <laughs> together, like, looking for cryptids and uh, on the way accidentally, like, <laughs> finding plots <laughs> of, like, major crimes that people have, like, hid through using the supernatural to, like, kind of hide themselves mm. <laughs> from the crime. I think that'd be just super fun. And maybe after a while it's like, oh no, it's more and more, like, actual, like, ghost stories. And then it's just, I don't know. As I said, this is not me going out of my way to make, like, a proper... A show out of this I just wanted to draw fan art honestly this is a, just an excuse to draw fan art if I'm being honest here guys and the last one I'm doing for today is Fred oh oh Fred Fred is probably the character I think uh, the HP of Velma show screwed up the second most after Velma because Oh my god, what did they do to him? I feel like, because Fred is such like, especially an early version of Fred, he is kind of bland. He's like, uh, I guess he's the leader. He splits up the gang. Number one sin of D&D. And that's kind of it. But I feel like in later versions, they just kind of like, okay, if, he, if he's bland, at least he's like, I feel like the current version of uh, Fred is usually leaning into him just being a himbo <laughs> where he's like he's obsessed with traps he loves he loves his friends he loves mysteries he's he's just he's just a golden retriever of a man and it's great everyone everyone loves Fred I feel like Fred is just Fred Fred is just nice so I don't know why they did him so dirty in this version with him I find it also weird that they also have him, they have him be like from this rich family because I feel like it's usually Daphne who is like from a rich family in most versions of Scooby Doo. So I don't know why. Is it because it's prep? Is that why? I guess that's a reason. But you know, I also just don't like the way he is. Because they make a lot of they make fun of him for not hitting puberty yet which is so gross like the show will be like people body shaming Velma is bad and they're shallow and mean but when people do that to Fred that's like oh that's funny because like, he's a white man who has privilege it's like uh, what is this show trying to tell me this is awful I hate I hate it so much anyways how, how would I do Fred well I basically said so I would just make him himbo Make him a himbo. He's the leader of the gang and he has just a head empty, no thoughts, just just solve mystery, solve mystery. <laughs> traps, make traps. Like, I feel like it's just, I feel like it's just so, 
so easy to write him. Because he's basically just like, you can basically just do anything you would like with Fred. And then they like, mm, nah, we're gonna make him so, such a jerk who no one likes. And uh, I, I hate it. I hate it so much. Because even I think like most of his like bland ass version from the 70s was not even mean like that. <laughs> like I feel like Fred should be the nicest person in the group. That is how I would write him. Like, he's the nicest person <laughs> in the crew. Everyone else is not me neither, necessarily. But they will, like, bite back. <laughs> As I feel like, yeah. It's just... Oh, my God. I, I'm not over how badly they screwed up Fred in this HBO version of Vesma. Just... Oh, my God. It, it's so bad. I also just... Oh, my God. I also like the idea that uh, Fred was the one that uh, formed the group, like everyone in the gang um, kind of knows Fred and that's how they all, I'm gonna explain more in the end where I kind of like explain more in depth what I would want in the show, but I would like to think that he is the one who like formed the group like properly, like he was the one who like suggested to all of them like, oh what if we like travel around the country? And other places and uh, went through like uh, scary old uh, places that's like supposedly haunted and everyone was like oh yeah that sounds so much fun so they because I feel like the number one thing I would make sure of <laughs> in the, my fictive version of Scooby-Doo is that they're all friends I mentioned it earlier but it's such a baffling route to take this series specifically to have all of these characters so unlikable and so hateful towards each other it's like it's such a baffling way to take this specific franchise and you can have a more mean-spirited scooby-doo it's just I feel like my number one problem is that it doesn't really feel like any of the writers of this show even likes the franchise at all. Like, I fully believe that this was originally, like, an, like an original concept, but then uh, Warner Brothers or HBO was like, mm, no, you have to have a recognizable IP so people would actually watch it. I would also like to like just point out that I really don't think the hatred for the show would be as big if this was an original IP. Because then I think it would just have gone under radar for most people. And then maybe like after like three months it would start showing up in my like TikTok algorithm with people showing like just clips of the TV shows like they have done with shows like Family Guy and The Loud House. I honestly that that's how I think they would have done it. But no, it has it has to be not that. And honestly, if you're gonna put something that's not an original IP on something, you should be just be prepared to get a backlash from the fans. It's such a it's such an annoying thing when uh, when like um, Hollywood and such just take something with an irrecognizable IP onto something and then blame the fan for not just being open enough to watch something new it it's just i hate it <laughs> so this part of the video is just me briefly talking about how i would do the show more like the story concept so as mentioned i would make them adults because as mentioned it's weird if i'm gonna watch an adult show i want to see adult characters and in the original series, they basically acted like young adults, so I don't really see that as like such a leap that they're not teenagers anymore. They don't even go to high school in the original series, it seems, so, you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's not a major loss. <laughs> like, I would make them, like, ghost hunters of sorts, where they, like, travel across the country and uh, visit, uh, like, haunted sites across the place like kind of like Buster and Sold esque <laughs> like story wise I'm not quite sure what I would do yet <laughs> but as I said this isn't really me trying to pitch a show for anyone this is just me 
drawing fan art of some of my favorite childhood characters of all time and uh, also complaining <laughs> about a terrible TV series. I would say that I don't really think this is going to be... This is probably one of the worst things that has come out of the Scooby-Doo IP, but it's not like there are certain other shows that also use Scooby-Doo that only really seems to have used it because it's recognizable. We can make money because people already know these characters. So, you know, I don't I don't think it's going to be the end of the world that these characters have been this terribly butchered. Scooby-Doo is just it's going to be fine. It's And there's also a bunch of other wonderful shows that has been made by the with the IP that slaps. <laughs> Watch Mystery Incorporated. That show is good. <laughs> Goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, haven't really posted in a while because I've been busy with work. Now I don't have work <laughs> because it was a seasonal thing. But uh, hopefully I'll get around to make more videos. And hope you enjoyed this one and goodbye.